Thank you. If you do happen to have a cell phone with you, please pull it out. Now put it on file break and hang it out on the table, but you will actually be using these during this for this group, we are going to be talking about technology in the learning community. We have Carly Thorpe, who is in the technology, Rebecca Lane in mathematics, and Joe Hurd, who is in development of mathematics. So I will take it away, y'all. Thank you. And welcome. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Carlos Torres, I'm from Math News Network, and reporting to you live here from the Tallahassee Community College campus, we were expecting the arrival of Governor Rebecca Lane, she's been newly elected and has selected TCC campus as her first campaign speech. We're sitting here full of a room full of people who are anxiously awaiting her arrival. Now, the individuals here were handpicked by the governor to be part of this monumental event. Other individuals were also invited to the event, but they had to get a ticket. And by the way, there were very limited amounts. I did receive reports that some of the individuals had to wait for days in lines. In fact, I interviewed a couple this morning who said that they've been waiting in line outside since Saturday in order to get into this event. I'm telling you, we have not been so excited here in GCC campus for this event since several years ago, in 2010, when the Board of Trustees selected Dr. Murdoch to be our latest president. Now, a couple of things. The governor has selected the TCC campus as this event because primarily she worked here for many years. In fact, much of the faculty here today have been colleagues and friends for her for many years. Now, a couple of things. I did receive a memo from the governor's office this morning, and she summed up basically what she was going to talk about today. Primarily, she's going to be talking about technology, in particular, BYOD. Now, BYOD has been a topic that has been much of debate in some form or another. Primarily, it's gained some popularity here in the last few years because it's a topic that has much benefit for the campus, for the staff, faculty, and of course, especially for students. Now, the governor will be talking about uh, BYOD in particular as in the benefits that it will bring for everybody here today. Now, BYOD, or bring your device, is something that it has a great, it may have a great effect for everybody, but yet it's something that still has not been enacted completely. Now, the math department has enacted some uh, a form of BYOD, primarily with the use of calculators, where students have the ability to use calculators and bring it in, bring them into the classroom, and then when they go home or they decide to go to the library, they can essentially use the technology as well. But we would like to expand this and essentially I include perhaps tablets or other devices that students can bring in for instruction. Now, of course, I understand on the memo as well, the governor said that she has prepared some other information, such as interviews as well, and some viewpoints from other individuals. Now, of course, the governor may take, uh, is expected to take some questions as well. Now, momentarily, I received word that the governor has arrived at campus, and she should be arriving in any moment. So while we wait for the governor to arrive, I did want to catch you up on other news. As far as the TCC basketball team, I understand that they have been... <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, I just received word that the governor has arrived. Please welcome and uh, give it a warm welcome for Governor Lane. Thank you. Thank you all for your support. It is so great to be back at Tallahassee Community College. It's just like coming back home and I'm so happy to be back here with you. Thank you for having me. Let's take a moment and look back over my campaign. <laughs> my name is Carlos Torres with the Math News Network. I'm sitting here today with newly elected Governor Rebecca Lane. Governor Lane ran on a specific platform for balancing the budget and spending billions of dollars in education. Before we could start the interview today, let's take a look back at her campaign. A groundbreaking day in Florida history, or should I say, her story. Dr. Rebecca Lane will serve at least the next four years as governor of the Sunshine State, the first female and African American to hold the position. This was a hard-fought election for Lane, who narrowly beat out rapper-turned-politician Flo Rida. The TCC math professor ran on a platform which included balancing the budget and job creation, but her top priority is education. 
Lane has always strived for technology-friendly classrooms, and with the support of parents and teachers across the state, Lane will now have the chance to carry out her goals. Governor Lane, thank you so much for taking the time for this interview today. Before we begin, I had a couple of questions that I would like to ask you as uh, you've been newly elected for, uh, as governor. Before I begin, one of the things I want to ask, focus on as far as how do you feel about using technology in the classroom? I believe that using technology in the classroom when it is appropriate is so beneficial for our students. And I'll focus on the mathematical classroom. When we have tools to help our students to learn, technology is one of those tools that can open up their understanding. So whether it's college algebra or calculus, it's another tool for them to look at. There are features such as the window feature, graphing, looking at maximum and minimums that again give our students a chance to really look at the mathematics and translate between those three representations. Translate between symbolic form, numerical form, or graphical form. So I'm very much for the idea of using technology in the classroom, again, when and where it is appropriate. Looking back, how did you use technology in the classroom? I used the smart board in the classroom, the LCD projector, and when I taught college algebra, I also used the graphing calculator and projecting it on that LCD projector. I really enjoyed being able to use all the technology that was in the mathematical classroom with my students mm -hmm. and getting a chance to see them learn and get more comfortable using it as we talked about different topics in mathematics and terms and definitions and formulas because it really seemed to open their eyes to understanding mathematics more. Now, you know, obviously, if you've used quite an array amounts of technology, so what are some of the benefits or that you would see as far as providing instructions to the student? I would say one of the benefits that I saw and that my students let me know about is it's one of those visual ways. We have different students in our classes and some students have a preference mathematically learning just seeing the equations or seeing symbols. Others are more visual and then there's others that are kinesthetic and so we have to let them have that movement. And so with mathematics, since we're translating between equations, between tables, between pictures or graphs, I really enjoy the technology and specifically the graphing calculator and being able to project that so the students can see those translations more quickly. Okay. And we can look at different types of functions as well in that time frame that we're given in the classroom. So I understand, so you used graphic calculators in the classroom. So, you know, touching and expanding on that area, what do you think as far as some of the best practices for using this technology in the classroom? If so, what are they? I think best practices go back to, first of all, looking at our objectives, starting with the curriculum, starting with the standards, mm -hmm. and making sure that it's aligned. So that alignment between your curriculum and then availability. I love the idea of using technology, and my comfort level is important, but I need to make sure that it's accessible for my students. Do they have graphing calculators mm -hmm. too? And will I be patient enough for the one that this is their first time, but at the same time be able to adapt for those that use it every day as well. So that alignment with the curriculum and accessibility and then how I test my students is important too. If I'm going to use technology, I need to let them know what I expect them to do and how I expect them to use it. Do I just want them to add, subtract, multiply, and divide on a device that has the capability of doing more than that? Or do I want them to look at specific features? And if I do, then I need to let them know what that is. And I think those are some of the best practices in using technology in the subject that you teach. Now, you know, obviously bringing technology into the classroom is obviously is a great passion to you. Now, you know, there's certain many challenges that are faced with regards to trying to bring technology and trying to integrate it within the classroom. So do you think that some of, there's some standards or national standards that may help influence bringing this type of technology into the classroom? Or what do you think? How can we make this happen? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. I think if we look at the last 30 or 50 years and we look at the national standards and we look at state standards, technology has been influenced more in those standards and the standards drive our curriculum. 
And so with those national standards, and if one of them being uh, the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, with the technology principle wanting us to be open to embracing technology in our classrooms, that does help us to know here's a national standard. Now the Sunshine State standards for Florida, they also have technology principles, so we need to be more open to making sure that we have that accessibility in the classrooms and that it's available for the teachers and the students. Well, thank you very much. That actually concludes my questions, and we certainly wish you the best of luck in the next four years. Thank you. My name is Carlos Torres for the Math News Network. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And I understand at this time I'd like to open the floor for questions. And I have one faculty, Professor Kirk, who has been eagerly awaiting to ask some questions. So if you may, can you take some questions from him? Yes. Yes, I'll take questions from Professor Kirk. Governor Lane. Yes. Governor. <laughs> when it comes to education as one of your platforms, how did technology impact your teaching? Good question. Let me show you a video of how I used technology in the classroom when I taught at Tallahassee Community College. I think that it's very important to use technology and to embrace technology. It's a tool to help them to understand mathematics. The idea of me having that access and then my students having access to it is extremely important looking at graphs, going from equations to graphs, going from tables to graphs. If I want my students to use graphing calculators, first of all, I need to know how to use them and I need to be comfortable. A, B, and C correspond with exactly one member of D, E, and F. Yes. yes. You all are correct, yes, this is a function. The smart board is another tool that I enjoy using because again, it helps me to be a little bit more free with my lectures so the technology is another tool that our students can use uh, and the instructors can use to help our students to understand mathematics or to understand the subjects that other instructors teach. Governor Lane, do students want to be using technology in the classrooms? Great question, Professor Hurd. Let me show you a video of some students' <laughs> viewpoints on using technology in the classroom. I do use pen and pad paper because I like to see colors, but I use my iPad for note taking because if I'm in a faster paced class, it's easier for me to type than it is for me to write. The device is used for um, reading my ebook. Um, and it is actually very helpful to use the tablet. It allows me to um, reduce the weight of my backpack. You know, some people have really nasty handwriting. Some people can't read their own handwriting. So it is better to go ahead and have it typed out. Most teachers and instructors here on TCC's campus have their PowerPoints online where you can, if you have a personal iPad or pad device, you can bring those up and put them up in the format where you have the notes on the side where you can actually put notes on them as you go along with their PowerPoint. I use my iPhone. Uh, I think it's better for taking notes, for um, understanding the material better. And uh, it takes time out of the class. Well, I just bring uh, my smartphone and get the TCC email and stuff here. Um, of course, I, can, I also have access to my computer at home through my smartphone. So if I have documents or something at home and I want to look at them on my smartphone, I can. I could type my own notes during in class while he's going over the blackboard thing. I just type my notes in class on SkyDrive and save it in, anywhere in the cloud. It's um, very convenient. Well, I think um, colleges and just institutions understand that we're smarter. We um, understand what not to do in class. And um, problems may arise, so you, it's, it's okay to have your phone now if you're not doing anything wrong. Say I'm using my device and I get confused on something, I need to look something up. I can just go from my ebook to the internet and look up, you know, whatever it is that I'm actually trying to find. And I think the more access to information and technology they provide to the students, I think the easier and the more prepared our students will be leaving here. Governor Lane, how will educators and administrators try to get involved? Excellent question. Let me share with you this interview with Brett Ingerman. He is the Vice President for Information Technology at Tallahassee Community College. Then we can listen to his perspective 
from an administrator's point of view <coughs> of using technology in the classroom. The romantic approach is that everybody will bring their own device, everyone will bring it to campus, we won't spend any money on technology to provide that, and everything will be great. The reality is, I think as an employer, we have an obligation to provide people with the tools they need to do their jobs. So it's going to be a delicate balance to try to figure out where does the ability to bring your own device actually fit. Instead of just thinking about bringing your own device and, and coming up with a plan to replace all institutional computers with that, we're thinking about an approach that says BYOD ready. So that can we do things for the college over the next two, three, four, five years to position ourselves so that as more people naturally bring their own devices, we're ready to em embrace that and incorporate them into the campus. So rather than creating labs, destinations where people will go and gather, which I think is a 19th century, 20th century view of where, how people learn, I think we need to provide a robust infrastructure so that any place a student or faculty wants to sit down and access these educational resources, the power, the network, all the, all the infrastructure they need to do what they want to do is there. I think book publishers seem destined to become yet the latest incarnation of the recording industry and the Motion Picture Association that doesn't quite figure out how to embrace a digital world. I think their model of taking digital textbooks and instead of printing them, making them available on a device begs the question that most teachers, most faculty don't teach that way. They teach this chapter and that chapter and this from this book and this from that book. I think what's going to end up having to happen is the disaggregation of materials such that you can pick and choose what you want, but even better, and this is the, the promise that they just haven't delivered yet, is the notion that when chapter six needs to be updated, why make a student buy a whole new edition? So some country changes its name in a, in a history book. Um, Suddenly, the students go to school the next day and they've got an addendum that says, hey, last night these following changes took place. Imagine if you would a classroom where all of your students, you only knew that there were one or two books available for all of them to share, or maybe one or two days a week you can go into a room where there's enough textbooks for everybody. You would design materials differently, design assignments, design learning activities differently in that kind of environment than one in where you know every student has access to a textbook, in class and after hours. I think with technology, we're still assuming that only a few of them have access to the resources and only for certain amounts of time and that we have to intentionally go to a lab to be able to sit down and work. I think with BYOD or more ownership of relevant devices, when a faculty member knows that students have access to the internet at a speed that's sufficient to do what they need to do and the applications they need to do it, suddenly you can come up with different, more innovative kinds of assignments knowing that everybody has it instead of wondering, can they get access to this? So I think BYOD enables raising the floor on the kinds of activities we can do um, with our students. So I think in a, at a place like TCC, I think that would be one of the most fundamental differences, is knowing that you could make assignments based on students having what they needed to do to do their work. We're hearing more about BYOD. How will your policies be shaped? Good question. Communication within schools and among schools is a very important factor and is actually critical for me moving forward. Having faculty to support the ideas of bringing your own device, BYOD, and using technology in the classroom is critical to moving forward. So during my term as governor, we will be having more dialogue throughout the state of Florida on BYOD. Governor Lake, thank you for answering these questions. I wish you well on your term. Thank you. Thank you all. And at this point, we'd like to share with a little bit more with regards to BYOD. You know, it's, it's something that is a topic of much discussion, and we're certainly welcome, and we're trying to get more discussion around campus here today. As there's a, plenty of literature available for you, one of the, one of, one of the areas that is available for us to take on your website is actually available here for TCC staff, and essentially you can get to it through the, uh, through the TCC portal. And there's a ton of valuable <coughs> resources that it will help you with better understanding this might be as with regards to BYOD. These are just some of the examples of some, some of the individuals that have shared and some of the viewpoints with regards to this topic. And at this point, one of the things we'd like to do, we'd like to get a discussion with regards to what you all think with regards about BYOD. So we would like to open up the discussion in regards to the topic. 
So at this point, we would like for everybody to please use your cell phones. Remember that data uh, rates may apply, so make sure you have phone this will work. You'll be sending a text message to the following. You'll be sending a text message to that number, which is 37607. Then the message will be, uh, you'll include that number, which is 69920, space, and then your message. Don't worry, those numbers will show up once more again. And please, we'll like to take a few moments to share and hear what you all have to say. <coughs> discussion of said resources. Our team's goal, we're wanting to as a group foster this uh, discussion so we don't just keep it limited and isolated in, in one area. We're wanting to also team up as part of our uh, team's mission and goal was to, at the onset of our, our project, that would help with my phone, there we go with this. And part of our, our team's goal and mission at the onset of, of the uh, project was to also have left behind as a legacy to be working with not only uh, Channel 22 TV and video team, who have been great to work with, but also to keep that discussion alive and maybe have a vehicle that we can keep that discussion going. 
We'd like to thank those that assisted in our presentation or were featured in it. That includes Dr. Corinna Barrett and, of course, our, our faculty, second year faculty team, excuse me, uh, Brandy Astor and Lane Foreman, <coughs> our Vice President of Information Technology, Brett Engerman, uh, Rachel Nicholson and the TCC 22 team. The students that you saw featured in the videos are students of Dr. Lane, Dr. Torres, and myself. And, of course, just to let you know, too, the videos were created and edited by TCC 22. Any questions from the audience? I can project. How did you create that uh, that text message thing? PolyB is the name of Poly Everywhere. It's the name of the website. It's free. Uh, it's available to you. You basically create Here's all the questions. And, uh, you might. Oh, I'm sorry. So we can get it on the record. Sorry about that. It's Paul D. or Paul Everywhere. It's basically a, it's a free service for you. And what you would do is you create your questions in there. And uh, essentially, you download the PowerPoint and uh, just edit it. And you can use it in classroom. We've got that use for several of my classes. And it's a great interactive tool to find out what students are saying. Uh, oftentimes, if they don't like to talk they, uh, in class, mm -hmm. they use their cell phones. So. And it's one way to get them to engage with the technology. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. I'm just wondering, um, as you were doing your research, did you find information about applications for BYOD in other courses, um, like the humanities, history, psychology, those kind of courses, and, and whether it has been successful or seems like more of a distraction for students? Not for humanity. I, I, I'm from at least technology. So now the technology, I'm in mean, a different situation because I typically I tend to uh, side with the bringing tech, tech, technology to the classroom because one of the things, and this is something that's very common in some of the interviews, is that sometimes some students are less likely to raise a hand and ask a question, and they're, they may go home with that question and they may decide to just do something else and not research the topic with the technology in the classroom. It does help, and I've seen some interest in the past, that it does help for students who are essentially are less likely to raise their hand, just going there and Google their question, and essentially be still engaged in the classroom. So it's some, I know that there's been topics with regards to some people say, well, it's a distraction, you know, they shouldn't be texting, but the way I personally look at it is that, you know, as long as they're engaging in some sort of interactive part with the class, even though it's not what I, not what I'm presenting, yet they're still doing, they're still engaging, engaging in the discussion with uh, the classroom. And as long as they're learning, for me personally, I welcome anything that they bring. Uh, however, I, there's a bit of a fine line because sometimes they can get distracted with those types of technology. So you have to, as an instructor, I've learned to have to find a way to somehow be aware of that it can happen. It can happen with or without the OIV. I mean, they can look, be looking outside the window and be distracted by the beautiful day that we have outside. So it's not <laughs> technology. The, the distraction is going to be there. So therefore, it's my job to just continuously engage them. I don't know if you are. I wanted to add on, if you don't mind. That's an excellent question, too. I did a more specialized research, which is essentially asking my class, my students up front, beginning of each semester. Now, I come with a little bit of a jaded perspective because I retired from the cell phone telephone industry, and every text you send helps my retirement. <laughs> uh, is that the students overall are very attuned to it, but it comes with limitations, and you have to set the ground rules right up front, and they know. I, I have a, you know, the four, three or four words, I will shut it down if I find out you're not using it appropriately. And it means, too, as an instructor, you have to be even more involved as far as you know your, how you calculate your pacing in your classroom, checking to ensure. Once they see you're walking around, kind of like that first test you take where you always walk around, make sure, make sure, they, they come around. Because we have in our classrooms, I know in, in ours, for, for developmental math, we have working mothers, you know, over the summer semester, I had students coming in after working all night shifts. Mm -hmm. Cell phones are crucial, but they understand that boundary <coughs> and what they need. Great question. Governor Lane, did you want anything? <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, we're going to take a 10-minute break and then we'll be back with our last group.